Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I am hard at work repotting Saracenias in the greenhouse. As you can see, there's a few in front of you that I've already nicely divided, repotted, everything like that. It's gonna make a nice, big, beautiful display now. It was just a big clump. Um, had to repot some of these guys into like three pots with multiple growth points per pot. Gonna be some nice looking plants um, come summertime. So it's the middle of January right now, about January the 10th, and it's a good time to repot Saracenia. They're still dormant, but they're going to be waking up soon. You want to do it while they're just still dormant or just starting to wake up, but you don't want to be doing it when they're putting up leaves if you can help it. So I have got one for us to do together over at the sink. So I'm going to take you over there now and let's get started. Okay, so this is Saracenia oreophylla, Sand Mountain. And it's not as big and full as the rest that I have divided um, this year. This is actually the smallest pot with the most room, but it's still been in here for a few years. So I want to give it some fresh um, mix and make a few divisions if possible. About a month ago, when everything was completely dormant, I chopped all of the um, pictures off these and that's why I'm going to leave them with, I'm not going to try to remove anything else other than some old spikes. But um, yeah, let's see what this looks like. So there's definitely still lots of room in this pot. As I say, it was more just that it had been in here for a couple years and thought it was probably time to divide it anyways. I'm probably gonna put it right back in the same pot, minus maybe a few divisions. Let's have a look here. My mix that I like to use, now this has quite a bit of perlite in. I'm, I'm getting away from the perlite. That's the white stuff here. Um, I, I tend it doesn't um, always stay where it's supposed to and it, a lot of time it floats up. And I've switched to a lot more sand in my mix. So you're gonna see my new mix, which is right beside us, is more like 25% sand and like 5% perlite. And it still does the same thing. Basically you just want something extra in there so the peat the peat moss just doesn't compact too much. Well, you don't have to be too gentle with them this time of year. They're asleep. They really don't know what's happening. Nice root system on them. So it's good and healthy. I'm just going to get rid of some of this dirt here. If I can, the tripod is right in the way of the garbage can or the recycling compost bin. There we go. And I'm going to switch out actually. I work on this sink. It's very messy because I've been repotting so much. I have these two wooden slats that go across it and it makes it very, very versatile. So I'm gonna do some spraying to um, get rid of some of this dirt. You can see lots of nice potential for divisions here. Hopefully you don't get too wet here. I'm gonna spray with the jet. I say it whenever I'm working over the sink, but I love having a sink in the greenhouse. It is just the greatest thing, especially a sink that can take solids like this. It just goes out into my backyard. So there we go. Now you don't have to be too careful with these. If you want to take divisions, now's the time. Like I say, this has potential for lots of divisions probably. And once we clear off some of the dead stuff. The only thing you want to make sure is that there's some roots either starting like this or it has roots on it. This is going to be a nice big growth point. And look at all these guys at the back here. So some you can just, like if you look at this, you can just pluck them off. You don't have to worry too worried how much roots you get as long as you get some. And that's going to be a nice little new division, a new little plant there. What else can I get for us? This side is just amazingly set up. It's like it just grew like this for the camera on purpose. So just with your fingers, give it a bit of a snap. There's another division. This is a point where I like to clean them up. When the pot is really full, it's really hard to get in there and get all the dead leaves out and the old bloom spikes and stuff like that. So there's another division. I 
I felt it snap. It's just a matter of getting the roots out. It's good that they're all nicely rooted anyways. Another division for us. Another division. Man, these are set up nicely. I couldn't have asked for it to be easier, especially for camera. Usually on camera, everything ends up being more difficult, but. And oh, that just sort of fell apart there. So there's a, a double sided division. It's got growth points on both sides. So in the middle here, I can just break that. And there is a couple more divisions. Pull off all the dead. So sometimes you'll accidentally break off a growth point like this and it'll have no roots. You still plant it. It will likely still um, still sprout roots. Nothing to really worry about. And as I say, you don't have to be too um, too careful with these guys. Now, I don't want to take too much more off this. This is my mother plant, so the more I take off, the, um, the less energy it's really going to have. Maybe I'll just take one more. You can see that one there. Some nice roots coming down. So, There we go. While I'm thinking about it, um, you know, once I pot these guys up, we'll pot up the big one together here. And I think this is where I'm going to leave this one. It's still a, a mother colony. When you pot these guys up, you want to make sure that um, you keep them a little bit drier. There is some potential for rot at this point. Um, it's winter, so here it's it's cold but not freezing. They're not going to be kept outside because I don't. I want to control the water, so I'm going to give them a medium soaking to make sure the the media is around the roots again and then I'm going to leave them on the drier side just to um, to break dormancy without being too wet. Um, I wouldn't worry about this at all. I've heard of people putting Vaseline in on it or even cinnamon or something like that but I've never ever had a problem with these guys um, rotting. Just keep them drier but still moist of course. So anyways that's some divisions. Now let's um, get repotting here. Give this a little bit more of a wash out now that we can get in the middle. I think this thing started uh, quite a few years ago, but with this one, one growth point, one division, just like I divided, so. There we go. Doesn't need to be cleaned up too much. Like I say, I did most of the cleaning about a month ago. I removed all the dead pictures and stuff like that. So, but yeah, you can see all of the growth is just starting to send out roots. So it's a great time to repot it. It's going back in the same pot. We don't have to be too careful with the roots. The peat moss, I pre-moistened slightly. So it's not bone dry. So it's not so hard to um, water it. Peat moss, you'll find, if you don't get it wet ahead of time, it, um, it is really resistant to, to becoming moist, to becoming wet. It just sort of sits on the top and finds little, um, makes little tunnels down through your pot. Doesn't wet very easily. So my whole bale, which I store in the garage, um, I've actually added a few gallons of water to the big bale of the peat moss. So it's just, it's not wet, but it's just not dry anymore. super easy. I'm hoping that the sand is more successful than the perlite or just as successful. There we go. We don't want to bury it too deep. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. And we'll give this a little bit of a watering. You can see what I did here. It's great with this tray. It makes it so I can um, still work up out of the sink. And water just flows right through. So there we go. Don't bury your um, rhizomes. Make sure they're somewhat on the surface there. And that looks like it's going to be pretty good. I'm not gonna fill it up anymore. I'm just gonna let it um, pack down a little bit so it drops another, it's probably gonna drop a half an inch. What that's gonna do is make it for, so easy for easy watering in the summertime. If you have your dirt level right up, say the rhizomes were higher and your dirt level is right at the top, you go to water it and the water just pours out the side. So this way it's almost, it traps the water in for a little bit and 
and makes it soak in as opposed to losing it out the edges. So anyways, that is repotting my Saracenia oreophila. I hope you like this video. Most Saracenias are going to be exactly the same. All Saracenias are really going to be exactly the same as this. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye guys.